as part of uh, the Russi's coverage of the referendum debate, um, we're talking today to Sir Simon Fraser, the former uh, permanent secretary at the Foreign Office and head of the diplomatic service. Uh, Sir Simon, thank you for joining us. Um, I wonder if I could ask you the first question. A lot of the people, the proponents of Brexit, of Britain's exit from the European Union, are suggesting that in security terms it would make very little difference. We still have the Five Eyes intelligence arrangement, we still have NATO in which we are a leading player, and uh, a lot of what the European Union was doing on security questions was fripperies, uh, uh, more vision uh, than substance. Uh, what's your view of that position? Well, I think it's clear that if we were to leave the European Union, we would still be an important player internationally in security issues. We would remain a permanent member of the Security Council. We would still be an influential member of NATO. So I don't think it's sensible to, if you like, downplay those aspects. But on the other hand, it is my view that uh, leaving the European Union uh, would uh, diminish uh, our international influence and ability to use international organizations in the fields of foreign policy and security policy to advance our interests and secure our objectives. I think in particular that our relationship with key partners in North America and in Europe would be affected by that decision. Uh, and therefore there's a risk that in all those important decisions in those international organizations, rather than being the shapers of decisions in Western policy and Western security uh, arrangements, we would end up being rather more takers of decisions that were forged in Washington, Berlin, Paris and other capitals. And I think that's an important consideration to bear in mind. Now, in previous discussions or previous interventions that you made in various fora, you also made the point that Britain's position in the European Union creates a certain balance within the Union, between the bigger powers and the smaller powers within the Union. Uh, do you believe that that pendulum kind of influence is important for the, for the Union? Well, I do think that Britain's membership of the European Union is, uh, in my view, important and advantageous for this country, but also important and advantageous for the European Union as a whole. I think that Britain br brings a balancing element within continental European st political structures. I think the relationship between Germany, France, Britain, and the other more significant European countries is important, and our presence there adds something to that balance. And I think that uh, if we were to leave, uh, the European Union would be disadvantaged uh, by our departure, both economically and in terms of the political structure and the presence that we have there. And also, we play a traditional role as advocates of uh, outward-facing internationalist policies in Europe, in the European Union. We are uh, amongst those countries which give, give a global perspective European policies, and I think that's very important. And it's perhaps a bit ironic that actually, at the moment, we are we appear to be potentially stepping away from that traditional, outward-facing internationalist approach, very much focusing on a domestic debate, about uh, which is driving uh, much of the debate and discussion of our place in Europe. Now, you ran the diplomatic service and all the effort at a period that wasn't easy. It wasn't easy in financial terms. Mm. Uh, it was a period of austerity in, in budgets. Uh, no, w did you ever feel that the Foreign Office itself could do anything to affect the domestic debate uh, in the UK, or was it really beyond your purview? Well, I think you're right to say that the, the, year, the five years when I was running the, the Foreign Office were challenging in a number of ways. First of all, it was an extremely turbulent period in international affairs, in Europe, in the Middle East, and of course in Ukraine and Russia and beyond. So we were constantly dealing with crises that we had to cope with. Um, and at the same time, we were facing considerable financial pressures, as were other parts of government. So it was certainly interesting and demanding. I think that um, uh, the Foreign Office has an important role in shaping this country's policy in the European Union, in negotiating with other uh, partners in Europe and around the world, and in explaining both internationally and actually increasingly domestically uh, what we're doing and why we're doing it. That's why one of the things that I was always very supportive of when I was in the Foreign Office was 
a stronger role for people in the Foreign Office, for example, in the social media, reaching out to domestic audiences as well as international audiences to explain the links between international policy action and decisions and the, the consequences of those for the average ordinary man and woman on the street in this country uh, uh, as in, in the sense that they affect our lives here. Now, some people in the Brexit camp have sort of dismissively referred to the Foreign Office as an agency of the European Union in London. Now, we've heard a lot, uh, you know, the, the old tebbit jibes, we've heard them all and they're not very substantial. But nevertheless, is there somehow a feeling that you were too international for the mood of today's politicians? Well, that may be uh, the case in one sense, that it is true. Uh, that there is a sense uh, that the Foreign Office as an institution has been pro-European in its uh, thinking and in its policy making. Um, but there's a reason for that, which is that I think when you work in the Foreign Office and you work in that international context and you examine the arguments and you think about how the European Union has on balance been a multiplier for British influence in the world, take for example on climate change, or on Iran, or on policy towards Russia in relation to sanctions, and in many other areas. Um, uh, then you see the benefits from the perspective of our foreign policy of being in the European Union. Uh, and therefore, it's not surprising that the mindset of the organization uh, is in that direction. But I think it's also really important that we understand and fully um, uh, accept the broader complexities of the domestic political debate and people's concerns about immigration, about the impact on public services, uh, about the costs indeed of, of membership of the European Union, which is a concern to some people, uh, and that we balance that all out and take a, a, a level-headed, uh, balanced uh, evaluation of our membership. Uh, my conclusion when I do that is that it, is, it remains in our, in our interest to be a member of the European Union. Uh, and I think that is the, as I say, the calculation that my colleagues in the Foreign Office have reached. Finally, what would you want to do if you were still in charge on the 24th of June if the result is a yes to remaining in the European Union? What do you think the British government should do? Well, I think if we uh, find on the 24th of June that we have voted to remain in the European Union, uh, that potentially presents an opportunity for this country uh, to seize the initiative and to put forward our agenda for Europe, and the way that we want the European Union to develop and the issues we want it to focus on in future. The, um, the government has spoken, the Prime Minister has spoken of the importance of reform in Europe. We achieved some reforms through his negotiation uh, in February, which certainly improved the terms of British membership of the European Union. But beyond that, uh, I think that we all uh, understand that we would like further reform in terms of some of the economic policies, the international policies uh, of the Union uh, uh, more broadly. And it would be very good if the British government could come forward with a positive agenda, uh, which responded to the concerns of the British people and to the concerns of business and other constituencies in this country, and provided a positive British agenda for Europe for the years ahead. Sir Simon, thank you so much.